Hi, I'm Stephen Han from Archery Supplies. Today we're going to test out the McKinney 400 Arrow. Um, so it's 400 spine. This is a lightweight carbon arrow. It's been out for a long time. Designed by Rick McKinney, one of the, or arguably the greatest archer in history. Um, depending on who you listen to. Um, but was Sportsman of the Year up against Michael Jordan. So that's a pretty big accomplishment. So these are a fairly lightweight arrow. And I'm a big fan of these arrows for long distance. For when the arrows are basically struggling to make the distance. Because they're nice light, light weight. There's a couple of other arrows in the lightweight category. I'm one from... One from Black Eagle, which is called X Impact, I think. Um, it's very lightweight as well. So there's a couple of theories here that we want to test. One is that a heavier point will be more accurate, so that it will glide, be more forgiving to shoot. The other one is in the wind, a heavier, heavier pointed arrow will be more stable in the wind than an arrow that's heavier overall. So... The heavier the point, the softer the spine of the arrow. These are 400 spine arrows. I normally shoot these Panderas. These are 500 spine with 120 grain point at the front. So these are spot on. Um, I'm shooting 50 pounds at 29 inches. Um, so this, we're going to see how this reacts. Now normally if the arrow is too stiff, the arrow will be left of center. So your sight will be pushed out to the left if you're right handed. If the arrow is too weak, the sight will be inside the line of the arrow. So generally you line up your bow straight down the center. If the sight pin's on the left, the arrow is too stiff. If the arrow is on the right, it's too, too soft. Now the reasoning for that is the arrow has to bend around the bow, so it has to flex around the bow, so it wraps around like a snake. It comes around like that. If it's too stiff, it doesn't wrap around enough, so it heads off in the left direction. If it's too weak, it's going to wrap around more and head in the right direction. Now, when you bear shaft tune, the same thing applies. The bear shaft, if too stiff, will be on the left of the grouped arrow. So we're going to show this. Um, so we're going to compare both. Um, so what I'm trying to determine here, so I wanted to go up in poundage on my bow, on my recurve. Um, so I wound up the bow. I normally just change limbs, but I wound up the bow, and I couldn't get the 500s to work. So I made up a set of 400 arrows um, for myself. And they were too stiff with the bow wound up. So it was like, oh, what do I do? I could go for lighter points on the 500s. Or I could go for 400s with heavier points. Or I could go for a 450. I found it really touchy. So this is me experimenting and me sharing information with you. I've been doing archery for 40 years. Um, shot a lot of compound. I've shot recurve. I've coached people to national level. So... And at the moment, I'm currently, I was ranked number one in the state, so I was, but that got, I got jumped over the other day. So anyway, um, so let's take a look. So we're going to start off just shooting. So I'm at 18 meters in the shop. It's terrible outside, so we're in here just shooting in the shop on Sunday morning. So this is my normal Pandaris arrow. This is going to give you, give you your position of hopefully where my normal arrow is. Now the McKinney shaft with 150 grain point is 30 grains lighter than my Pandaris arrow. So 120 grain point on the Pandaris, 150 on the McKinney, 30 grain lighter on the McKinney. So one of my questions is for clout, what weight arrow do I need? What speed do I need out of the recap to shoot 165 meters? I don't know that answer and we're going to try and find out this answer. That's my first arrow of the day, so we'll just shoot a couple more just to warm up and sort of see how they go. I never know how they're going to go, so it's always best to warm up before you start. That felt better. Okay, last. This is the last Pandaris. Now I've been very happy with the Pandaris arrows. Very happy with the Bony Impulse um, arrows, veins on them. Right, 
so this is a McKinney 400 with the 150 grain point. Now when you shoot a McKinney arrow, I like the Knox. Um, I did think about shooting Easter Knox and I chose Boning F Knox. Um, so my string is a large groove. Um, so I'm currently shooting Fivix large groove Knox. Um, I chose the Boning just because they're a bit cheaper than the Eastern. Eastern um, are more expensive. And I thought the Boning Knox is actually quite a nice knock. I have done tests before with different knocks and I've found no, basically no difference. And I've done those back to 50 meters and most of them have grouped in the same spots. So I was like, look, I like the color. Price point's good. But I did think about the Eastern G knock as well. And one of the reasons I chose the bony knock, I had a customer come in on Friday and said, can you give me some more of these knocks? And they look like an Eastern knock, but they weren't because they didn't have the little divots in them. And I was like, I can't work out what this is. <laughs> and it was a bony knock. And I was like, oh, looks exactly the same as an Eastern knock. Now, again, the McKinney shaft is is 30 feet per second wider, so it should be higher in the target than the Pandaris. The McKinney shafts are a 4.2, the Pandaris is a 3.2, so the Pandaris is your X10 thickness. Um, your McKinney is 4.2, so that's like a carbon one, a Victory VAP. Um, so it's a size slightly bigger. And you might say, well, why'd you pick a 4.2? So there's a couple of reasons. They've got cheap points. So the points I fit in in these are a toe point point. They are 150 grain. They are $15 a pack. Um, and they come right up to 200 grains. So for me, tuning is going to be cheap. Um, and it will allow me to test out for clout how they go. Now, to get my clout arrows to work, I want to have them set up so I can shoot target with them. So I want to be able to shoot target scores with my clout arrows. So I want them perfectly tuned. Tuned. And I need them to drop at 165 meters. So that's my criteria. So this is what we've got to find. We've got to find an arrow that shoots well, that drops at 165 meters. So too heavy, and I can't make the difference. Too light, and the arrow will be coming in too flat, and I'll get too much up and down movement. So too many highs and lows because you shouldn't get a target on the ground. Okay, so this is the bear shaft. I generally always have one bear shaft in my quiver. If I can, unless I'm getting down on arrows and then I'll fletch them all. But that way you can always check your tune to make sure everything's okay. And generally when you check out a bear shaft, um, check it out up close. Because the more you're out with your tune, the further it will be away from the target. So if you're out miles at 5 meters, you go back to 50, it'll be out, I'm going to say 10 times as much, but pretty much 10 times as much. So when you do your tuning, start off close. And then, you know, the further back you go, that's like micro tuning, so that's getting it all pinpointed. So if you can tune at 50 meters, then it's going to be smack on at 50, at 5. So let's go and have a look at that group. Okay, so I'm up here at the target, and this is kind of interesting for me. So the Pandaris arrows are in a straight line. They're kind of in line with the target, which is kind of what I expect because it's... At home, so here I'm shooting slightly longer than 18 meters, I'm shooting 19 meters. At home I shoot slightly short of, of 18 meters when I shoot inside my pergola area, which I was shooting last night when it was freezing. Um, 
So it's slightly low, you know, 10, 9, and there's a 7 down here, but they're in a straight line, which is good. Ultimately, the McKinney shafts with the spin wings are on the left of the Panderas. There's only one which is in the same line. The grouping, I would say, on the McKinney's is not as good. But look where the bear shaft is, way out here. So it's missing by that much, by my shoulders basically. It's missing by that much. Now this indicates the arrows are too stiff. So 500 smack on. So I could try winding up the bow. Now winding up the bow to me is an issue because I've got these arrows, the Panderas is shooting great. I'm happy with them. And last time I wound up my bow to try to get 400s to work, I couldn't get the same results. I just shot a personal best and I was like, let's wind up the bow and let's try new arrows. So I only just started shooting 290s for indoors out of 300s and I was like, let's wind up the arrow bow and let's tune it and then suddenly all my tunes out and I can't get the 400s to work. And then to go back to the lighter poundage, I'm then like, well, all my tunes out and I've got to reset up my bow. So that's why I haven't done it. Now there's two options here. One would be to get another riser um and basically set leave this bow as is and then have another bow set up to go up in poundage um or you just play around with that but i'm not like i shoot competitions i practice every night i don't want to touch this bow i want to leave this bow set up for the pandaris and i want to get another arrows sorted now with this being so far out what i want to do is i want to fit 200 grain points to these um arrows now what's interesting, the height wise, the McKees are actually probably a little bit lower in the target than the Panderas, which is very interesting because it's 30 grains, 30 grains lighter, the McKinney, than the Panderas. But the Panderas is actually the same height in the target. Now that makes no sense to me whatsoever. Um, some would say the plastic veins are going to slow you down more. Well, they're in the same height. They're heavier and they're in the same... Same plane, so that's a bit weird. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take out these points. I'm going to take out the 150s, fit 200s, and let's come back and let's shoot them again and see what happens. Okay, so I've fitted the 200 grain points, and look at them, they're huge. Now, the thing you'll notice first off with your, tongue, with your stainless steel point is it's much longer than a tungsten point. Tungsten points are much shorter because they're about twice the density of stainless, so they're about half the size, maybe less. So I'm going to show you the difference between the 150 grain point and the 200. So this is the 200 grain point, so the size, the length of my finger is there. And this is the 150 grain point underneath it. So, hopefully we can show you that. So the first thing you're going to notice is the 200 grain point is longer at the front. So this means I've got to move my clicker forward. Okay, so that's a bit of a pain. So now I can't compare my tungsten arrows, my paragons to my McKinney arrows. So that's longer, but you'll also notice the shaft is a bit longer at the back end here. Now the making the shaft longer is gonna make the sh um, arrow more stiff. Now I don't know what effect this is gonna have overall, but you've got that much of steel in the arrow. So it's about almost two inches. Um, two inches of steel in the front of the arrow. So let's shoot it. Um, let's see how they go. And now the weight of the arrow. Sorry, I forget. Um, I take phone calls while I'm shooting these while I'm shooting these videos. Um, so I put the points in with hot melt. So I took out the points, just heated them up, took the points out, put the points back in with um, hot melt. But now the arrows with the 200 grain point are 30, about 30 grains heavier than the Paragons, so... Now I did notice one of the spin vanes I put on there came off, so... I don't know if it'll show up when I shoot, but... It's normally held down with the tape, so obviously I missed it. I missed the back end of it when I put the tape on. So I've got two things I'm trying to test here. I'm trying to see if I can get the spine correct. And I'm interested if a heavier front of center 
is more forgiving to shoot. Now the only way I can test that really is to get the tune of the arrow correct. So it makes it like when you're choosing arrows, it is really hard to get them correct. I mean, the number of customers who come in and say, which arrow should I get? I'm like, well, look, at this is my best guess. I don't know if I'm going to be right or wrong. But you can see with this, so 500s are spot on. They go to 400s with heavier points. Can't get them, I can't get them soft enough. And it's literally the next size up. So it's very hard when you're increasing on a recurve, when you're increasing the poundage, you have to change arrows, um, or you have to change your point weight to try and get the tune correct. And yes, you can adjust the plunger or in and out and stuff like that. So like with 150 grains, they're coming up as stiff, so you can loosen up the plunger, but I don't really want the plunger that much looser. I could move it inside. But look, this is all squared up and I just, I'm not a person who wants to tune the bow for poor performance. I want to get the arrows exactly right. So when I first started on recurve, I brought three dozen arrows. I brought them of all the different spines with the same point weight. And I shot them all to see which size to see which size suited. Now what I found was on the arrow charts, the arrow charts were stiff. So I found I had to actually jump down. Now there's going to be a difference based on your string you use, the limbs you're using, because there's clearly a difference between these limbs, the MXT limbs from Win and Win. The MXT limbs are 20 feet per second faster than these limbs. And then you can say, well, what happens if I go to the Argon X limbs, which are faster than these limbs? Well, I don't know. That's the whole problem. You have to experiment with recurve. Recurve compound, if you're going to go for compound and tuning, compound arrows shoot pretty good because you're shooting a releaser and they tend to shoot dead straight. With a recurve, they've got to bend around the riser because if you release because it's got to come off your fingers much harder to get the whole bow to work. I almost find it like when I'm shooting recurve, to me it's a bit of magic that they all go in the middle. It's, it's just like, how does that happen? It's it's, it's it's craziness it's like when I started I didn't even hit the target it was it took me weeks and weeks to hit the hit the target so for me like archery is all magical it's like you can actually shoot an arrow down range and hit where you're aiming at that's like, like it's magic how does that happen Notice now I'm shooting, I'm lifting this, I'm lifting this arm up instead of keeping it down because of the the point, because the point's longer and I've moved the clicker forward. I'm not sure. So this is the bear shaft. So last time on the bear shaft it actually missed the target out to the left. And it was about a shoulder width apart from the that's 150 from the grouping. So let's see how this one goes. Now, and the thing I notice about arrows, the more weight the arrow is, the quieter the bow is. This bow is extremely quiet with these arrows. Um, where if I shoot a faster arrow, the bow's got a lot more twang to it. So a lot of people talk about how noisy my bow is. Shoot a heavy arrow and it will take all the noise out of the bow.
let's go and check that group. Okay, so I'm up here at the target. These are 200 grain points. Look, I feel like this is actually not too bad. Um, the arrows are, you know, not as good as the Pandaris. It's not as good as the Pandaris, right? Like, there's kind of, like, you know, those kind of, and there's a couple down there. And, but it's not, it's not too bad. It's not as good. You know, they're not thing. No, they're slightly low on the target. 30 grain heavier. But it's not as low as I'd expect. But you'll see now the group is basically a ham width apart. So with this, I think I can get these arrows to work. And what I'm thinking, so I'm so far like since I've been had to make these arrows fit 150 grain points, now I've fitted 200 grain points. I'm probably into this experiment probably three to four hours. Um, but I don't, I think the experiment is. Because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find an arrow I can shoot at 90 meters and I'm trying to find an arrow I can shoot for clout. So I'm looking for an arrow which is forgiving. So I think with this I've got enough by winding up the bow poundage, and I'm not going to change it on this, but to grab another bow, wind up the bow poundage and get this, get the bear shaft in the middle of this group and then see how it groups. So I, th I think that's my next step. So I'm not going to play around with my current bow. Um, I'm going to set up another bow. <laughs> I'm going to set up another bow. And uh, which is good if you own an archery shop, people say. Like, it's good that you can go and buy a bow if you've got an archery shop. Well, it still costs me money. Okay, it still costs me money, but I shoot every day. I put hours and hours into it. Um, and to get an arrow. Like, I've been trying to win the state championship and I've been beaten for like four four years by literally a couple of points every year and all their work and I've been putting in extra work this year like all the work and it's like if I can get that in that group I can get this to I can get this to group 200 grain points and let's say it's more forgiving than 120 grain points then I'm on a winner right and then what happens is everyone else who shoots recurve will do the same thing and they'll shoot the same scores and I'm back in back at stage one. Uh, <laughs> that's what happens. Um, but that's where I'm up to. So 200 grain point, 400 spine arrows. So it's an extra 80 grains and I still cannot get these arrows to shoot. So we're going to go for, we're going to wind up the bow um, and we'll do another video where I actually get these to work. But that's going to be another, you know, to set up a new bow is going to be, and get the poundage right, it's probably going to be another two to three hours work for me. So, anyway, so that'll be another video where I set up another bow and get these arrows to work. And then we can experiment with the groups and then we can see how they work for clout. And there'll be another video where we get clout to work. Anyway, if you want to watch those videos, they'll be coming because that's what we're going to be working on. Um, I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies and the next videos we're going to be comparing is uh, compound bows, comparing short and long axle in 18 meter scores. So I'm going to shoot a score 18 meters indoors with a short axle and a long axle bow and then we're going to do the same thing at 50 meters and what I would expect to be happen is 50 meters should expand the difference. Um, I saw one of the pro shooters, I think his name's Marlo. Oh, I'm terrible. Um, he just changed to a, from a um, result to a victory because he said the victory um, elite is faster than the result. Well, you could have changed the module. You could have reduced the let off um, to increase the speed. Um, I found that quite kind of interesting. I don't know if he shoots unmarked or marked. And I don't know how much work he did to compare his scores on the victory versus the result because it takes so many hours and hours of shooting to see if there's a difference between one product and another product. And you might find that at 18 meters, you're more accurate with this, but at 50 meters, you're more accurate with the other bow because it's more speed. So it's lots and lots of work. Anyway, I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Splice. Thanks for watching. Bye.